Today is the Feast of Pentecost, and Pentecost is the last day of Easter. It marks the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus' disciples. But as the last day of Easter, it's a time for us to focus upon what Easter means. Easter begins, of course, with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the most important event in human history, an event when death is not simply overcome, but is completely defeated. And as such, as such a celebration, Easter lasts for 54 days, far longer than the 12 days of Christmas or the 40 days of Lent. And that sense of victory over death is one that we hope to recognise in funerals today. And one of the most common things I'm asked to read or have read at funerals today is that from a, a funeral sermon by a man called Henry Scott Holland, who was the Dean of St Paul's Cathedral, and who preached at the funeral of Edward VII. It's a well-known passage, one with which you will probably be very familiar. It's the passage that begins, Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away into the next room. That message is, in some ways, comforting but doesn't necessarily speak to our own personal experience of death. But then it is only one part of a much longer sermon that reflects on many different elements of death. A different part of that same sermon, one that we tend not to hear read at funerals today, reads like this. Death is so inexplicable, so ruthless, so blundering, the cruel ambush into which we are snared. It makes its horrible breach in our gladness with careless and inhuman disregard of us. Beyond the darkness hides its impenetrable secret, dumb as the night, that terrifying silence. And it was this thought, this image of death, that was reflected on by Dylan Thomas in his famous poem, Go not quietly into that dark night, which we shall hear read now. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end know dark is right, because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height. Curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Death is a powerful, awful, fearful enemy. And to think otherwise is a denial of the truth. To simply say, death is nothing at all, is to ignore the reality of the heart-breaking, soul-destroying violence of being torn away from those whom we love. And yet, our Christian faith teaches us that death is not the end. Not because death is nothing at all, but because death has and will again be overcome. This is the theme of a poem by John Donne, which we shall hear read now by the actor Richard Burton. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, 
nor yet canst thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be, much pleasure then from thee, much more must flow, and soonest our best men with thee do go. Rest of their bones and souls' delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and dust with poison, war, and sickness dwell, and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke. Why swell'st thou then? One short sleep past we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. But why am I banging on about death today on this Feast of Pentecost? Well, it's because the opposite of death is, of course, life. And we can't fully appreciate and understand life until we completely understand the meaning and the reality of death also. Today is the last day of Easter, the culmination of Christ's death and resurrection, when the promise of resurrection life was fulfilled in the pouring out of God's Holy Spirit upon his disciples and upon the early church. What we celebrate today in the coming of the Holy Spirit is, of course, the outpouring of Christ's new and resurrection life upon God's people. A life that inhabits us, a life that animates us, a life that directs and protects us. Not from physical harm necessarily, but from eternal death. In the coming of the Holy Spirit, we concentrate on the coming of God's life into the life of the church, in and upon and amongst us. As Jesus said in John chapter 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. It's no accident that the Holy Spirit appeared with the sound of a violent wind. In the Old Testament, this is often the sign of the activity of God in the world. And the coming of this Holy Spirit was in fact the fulfilment of a prophecy made by the prophet Joel, who wrote, Then afterwards I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. It's also no accident that this outpouring of the Holy Spirit was greeted by signs and miracles performed by the disciples. We read, Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. With faith in the Father and in the name of the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit, those disciples went out and lived God's new life in the world. They destroyed and did away with all that mars and kills abundant living. They proclaimed Christ's victory in imitating his life, in healing the sick and in raising the dead. There is no doubt that death is a dreadful and fearful enemy. We see it around us in the change and decay of this world. And yet ultimately, death has been defeated. And death has been defeated by life. The life of God poured out upon the world on this day of Pentecost. I want to conclude with some words from Romans chapter 8. These words also will be familiar from funeral services. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord.